有啊。All right, guys. So as you can see, I am here not only in Canada but in the King of DIYs fish room. We're gonna be doing a tour. We're also gonna be feeding some of your monster fish, right? Mm, yes. What we got here? Well, the whole point of every aquarium out here is to kind of showcase a different area of the hobby. And in the first tank, we have Lake Tangigika. We only have two species of fish in here. They are only babies, so it's not that impressive, but we have the lemon cichlid, also known as Lily Lupot. And then we have a shell-dwelling fish in here as well, which is called the Gold Oscillatus. Oh, uh, would you look at that? Then we have Central America. These guys are a Central American cichlid. They are absolutely robust, titled the Rainbow Cichlid, also known as the Sinspillum. This is a very large and robust cichlid. We're looking to get a pair out of these guys so we can perhaps go through the whole life cycle of them. They're called the uh, Rainbow Cichlid for obvious reasons. They showcase every color of the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. Then, of course, we've got to do something a little more advanced with a high-tech planted aquarium. We do have a carpet of dwarf hair grass, and then of course, arguably the face of the freshwater hobby for the longest time, but Cardinal Tetra. This looks almost like a jungle forest. It doesn't look like it's supposed to be underwater. Absolutely phenomenal tank. South American cichlids as well. You will see a reoccurring theme here where I keep a tremendous amount of large fish. This though is a fish that is close to heart. This is the Walru cichlid, also known as the Walru amphicanthoids. The reason I named my fish Walru Joey over 11 years ago. One of my all time favorites. We do have another pet fish in here, a Fahaka that's going to grow to about 18 inches long. If we do have a holding tank with some fish that, uh, well, we just have some outsiders that need to be placed in tanks, or I'm not sure what we'll do. Most of the fish are probably inside this log. Here's a peacock bass. We have a large bicher and of course clown loaches, but this is the tank that uh, showcases Lake Tangayika beautifully. We have three species of fish. We have the gold head compriceps. We have the Julies, and then of course more shell dwellers. The fascinating thing about shell dwellers is they are some of the most smallest cichlids in the world inhabiting shells that are just littered along the lake in Africa. What does the filtration look like? Filtration, for example, is all do-it-yourself sumps. These are just 40 gallon breeder tanks. Very common in the freshwater hobby is to create trickle tower systems and I basically did that because they're so easy. Not difficult at all. I focus on simplicity and consistency out here. This is your signature tank. This is what a lot of people know you by. You built this yourself, didn't you? Absolutely, it's a 2,100 gallon aquarium. It's 10 feet long, seven feet wide, four feet tall. My only regret, is that I didn't go bigger. I probably should have made it 18 feet long and a little bit taller. Maybe pushed it towards 5,000 gallons. But in here are my favorite fish of all time, the Asian arowana, as well as the freshwater stingray. We have five freshwater stingrays within here right now. That's Susan, right? Yes, that's Susan. Susan is my male giant gourami. She is a fan favorite. This girl is going to get monstrous in size. She'll end up being at least two feet long probably weighing about 30 pounds. What is that, what is that, what is that? These are these are massive canister filters that you would find in the freshwater or even the saltwater hobby. Everyone sees you in this area filming. There's your camera, what's through that door? Well, originally this was gonna be like a workshop, but then I was like, mm, I kinda want more aquarium. So I actually built it in this exact location when this used to be my garage. Here in my garage. Garage has been torn down and this building put up dedicated to just my aquariums. But it's 375 gallons, it's eight feet long, three feet wide, two feet tall, 125 gallon bashy sump. This is a 500 gallon system. Okay, so this is like a whole little separate room. Yeah. You got the aquarium dot gallery. I wanted to showcase what goes on in this corner. So these are just microscopes. This one's going to allow me to look at things at a cellular level, where this one here is more of a swing arm. This is gonna make me look at things really, really close. Cause sometimes when you get your fish get sick or something happens, you need to take scrapings and you need to find out what's actually happening. Okay. Here, up there is your camera equipment. Um, some more camera equipment. So we have some GoPros. Um, I think this is the actual camera that you use, which is GH5. Just like lenses. A lot of people say, Joey, wear a microphone. I'm a running gunner. When I get excited and I want to make a video, 
Oh, I almost want to grab my cell phone and go film it. It's not professional out here. I've never tried to give off the impression that I'm doing it. I'm just a hobbyist. But this is where I come to edit, which is just an iMac. So what's in this room? What yeah, I mean, it's like the utility closet. In here, we have a number of things on the go. My hot water tank to do water changes, which will really, I, idealistically, I could change maybe 500 gallons of water before I run out of hot water. And then, then we got a freezer here with some fish food in there, just frozen food. Shrimp. I feed a lot of scallops. I feed a lot of clam meat. I make my own foods, but uh, this is just the raw ingredients. Oh, and then more fish foods here. I go through a lot of fish food. It costs me about six to $800 a month in food to feed everything. What is that like? These monster fish, they gotta eat a ton. They'll eat shrimp, tilapia, scallops, mussels, clams, any hobby is one of the favorite parts of the hobby is feeding your fish. It is mandatory that you feed my fish. You. Bro. This. All right, so we're gonna get you to feed some frozen food, some shrimp, then of course some salad shrimp. These are some of my fish. Wait, who's holding the camera? Sean Snails. We can't make a fish tank video without Sean Snails. So yeah, you can just throw handfuls of this in there and they should go ahead and eat that. Oh, it's not a should, they will eat that. You can also try to hand feed them and see if they'll eat out of your hand. Here he goes. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Oh! Ow! That air one almost took my feet off. I didn't off. want to say it, but this is a pretty dangerous aquarium. I'm gonna get you back, man. That was not cool at all. Got a battle scar. All right, I'm gonna show you guys who's boss. <laughs> this tank's so simple to speed. You just chuck it in, let it float to the bottom. Um, and it just rains down on them. Wow, these guys are actually really pretty. How, much, how much does a fish like that sell for? Maybe 20 bucks. The freshwater fish are not expensive. And even as babies, they might have been five or 10. Okay, they're like, who are you? They're like this saltwater scrub, we're not eating from them. <laughs> I taste salt. Come on, come on. Well, these they guys, have teeth, yeah. they, they have teeth to be able to rip vegetation apart. I feel like a waiter at like a very nice seafood restaurant, but the roles are reversed. This is a puffer eat? Will you eat this stuff? Dude. Do you ever feel <laughs> like a floating shrimp? Oh, there he goes. Get it, bro. Get it, bro. Get it. <gasps> That's legit the first time he's ever eaten on camera. Legitness. Yeah. Are you are the fish whisperer. You are you the king of FISH? All right, welcome to the, uh, the 12G show. I just created this show on the spot. This is the first episode. Thanks for being here, my man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tommy Joseph, what's something about you that not a lot of people know? Whew. Um, I can sit with a jar of pickles or olives and eat the whole thing. You're like the Casey Neistat of fish tubers. This <laughs> space is kind of like his studio. What's the worst part about this room? So many eyes on it. Right. Everything is being watched and everybody believes that because I'm a popular YouTuber that things never happen. It's being judged so harshly, but yet on the flip side, the benefits are I get to reach so many people with my message of, look how awesome the aquarium hobby is. So um, welcome back guys. I want everyone to look under their seats because come on and Joey, we're giving everyone a free Asian Air one. You get one. You get one. <laughs> What do you like to do for fun? When Joey's not doing aquariums, what do you like to do? Okay, so I know that I'm supposed to have some crazy thing that I do, but when the camera goes off, I go back to being Joey, which these things don't exist in my personal life. Like, I still enjoy doing all the same things everybody else does, like playing with my dog, or gaming with my son, or I just spend time with my family and friends for the most part, and the people that I care about the most. So. Has anyone filmed your aquarium room from this angle? Uh, no. I wish they would. That's the end of this video. Make sure to subscribe to Joey's channel. You will see both of us at Aquashella. We're doing aquascaping contests, uh, Celebrity Jeopardy, and he is one of our keynote speakers. <laughs> Lucky to have you come to Aquashella, man. Appreciate it. September 28th and 29th. We will see you there, but until then, remember to keep those nitrates low. George. Put up, put up. Out. Anyways, that's it for today, guys. Don't forget to keep your pants low. Is pants low or nitrates low? Nitrates low. <laughs>
George, out! Do you think you could uh, tell me why there's algae growing in my pond? Uh, yeah. You're not doing enough water changes. Wait. Yeah, not enough water changes.